Welcome, friends. Mark's Gospel for the second Sunday of Lent relates one of the most important events in the life of Christ, his transfiguration. The purpose of the transfiguration is to reveal that the fullness of life is destined for us and also to fortify our faith, especially in this season of Lent. So join me in looking at three paintings to bring alive Mark's Gospel passage. I will not use our time to read the whole Gospel passage, but will refer to the two parts highlighted, which I hope my choice of paintings can help give richer meanings to these verses. The first part, And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, This is my beloved son, listen to him. This painting by Karl Bloch helps us, the viewer, imagine ourselves at the transfiguration. In the composition, we follow the gaze of the three apostles as they beheld the scene unfolding in front of them. Like them, you might also instinctively want to throw up your hands to shield your eyes from the intense bright light. For indeed, the artist has painted Jesus and Moses and Elijah with such bright intensity that the details of face, body and clothes decolorize into nothing but pure light. Even the light is so piercing that it surrounds the cactus vegetation on the right. Peter, James and John were privileged to witness the inner life of Christ. So far, they have seen their master in human form. Now they saw him in his divine glory. And we too, the viewers, perched half in terror, half in awe, get a glimpse of the glory that awaits us when we join the divine. Written words can only tell so much about this brightness that no earthly bleach can cause. So I hope this painting will help you visualize just that, that pure light that is Christ our Lord. I would like to use the next painting by Gerard David to reflect on the second focus of Mark's Gospel, the voice of God. Before we reflect on this part, let's have an overall view of the painting. There is a longer narrative through its composition of events shown in the background and foreground. At the near bottom right edge, we see Jesus teaching his disciples, and through contrast of size, we get a sense this is taking place at a distance away and at ground level. Perhaps the artist has included this to remind us that in all three synoptic gospels, before the event of his transfiguration, Jesus had taught his disciples the necessity of taking up one's cross in order to follow him. In Matthew and Mark's gospels, Jesus even spoke of his forthcoming death and resurrection. With these thoughts still in their minds and perhaps worrying them, Peter, James and John are given the special privilege of following Jesus up the mountain. Painted in somewhat dramatic poses, these three apostles see Jesus' divine nature radiate from his human body. The top half of the painting is abound with symbolism. Mountains are traditionally places where God is to be found. And in this painting, God is depicted above Jesus. God the Father emerges from a cloud, which is also a symbol of God's presence. Two great figures from the Old Testament also emerge from the clouds, Moses and Elijah. Moses represents the law, for he too received God's law on another mountain, and Elijah is regarded as the greatest of the prophets. 
Together, they represent the fulfillment of God's revelation. Thus, the message to the privileged three apostles is that Jesus, the man they have pledged to follow, is the fullness of this revelation. But we must not forget the scripture text says that a voice came out of the cloud. This is my beloved son, listen to him. So the artist has chosen to make this verse clear in his inclusion of God the Father with crown on his head and scepter in his hand. For Jesus, the transfiguration was a turning point in his life. Beyond this, he will descend and go on the road to Gethsemane and go on to Calvary. The church has placed this event in Lent to remind us that we too must journey with Jesus to Calvary. In the season of Lent, we pay special attention to the meaning of bearing crosses, denying ourselves in order to follow Jesus. It will be difficult, but may I suggest we can look to this painting for reassurance. Compare the two horizontal halves of the composition. The dramatic poses of the apostles convey turmoil and agitation, but the calm orderly alignments of father and son with the two great prophets is a preview of the answers to our earthly tribulations. Our reward in heaven, if we but keep attentive and listen to the beloved son. This last painting by Raffaello Sanzio da Ubino, or more well known simply as Raphael, is considered his masterpiece. He had not yet completed it when he died on Good Friday, and the remaining parts were done by his students, but this work is wholly considered Raphael's triumphal masterpiece. Raphael's depiction is unique in Christian art because he combines the biblical narrative of the Transfiguration with another event after Christ's descent from the mountain. Let's look first at the first event. By now, the figures in the upper half would be familiar to us and for its significance of the glorified Christ. Christ floats towards the source of light, the invisible Father who has made visible his love in his beloved Son. Christ's arms are raised, prefiguring the crucifixion and the ascension. The three apostles fall prostrate in awe of his glory. John lowers his face in adoration, while James at the right hides his face in humility. But Peter, eyes shielded but undaunted, still gazes upwards. In the lower half of the painting, Raphael depicts an event that happens after the Transfiguration. The Apostles attempt unsuccessfully to free a boy of his demonic possession. In this scene, there are two groups. On the left are the Apostles and on the right is the family. The young boy possessed by the demon is helpless his eyes are rolled back, his arms flailing. Supporting his son, the father pleads with the apostles to help the son. Just look at the entreaty on his face. The mother kneels at the boy's right, her face distressed by her suffering. The men and women with them implore for help. On the other side, the remaining nine apostles a disarrayed lord. Some seem afraid, others exchange anxious glances. Two of them point towards the mountain as if to say only Christ can help, while the last looks to a book for guidance. Raphael's transfiguration 
is divided into two parts, the celestial and the earthly. There is striking contrast. The redemptive power of Christ is depicted through bright light and a certain calmness at the top half. The flaws of man are portrayed by the dark, chaotic scene in the bottom half. This contrast is perhaps pertinent for us in Lent. Our faith is often weak. We may fail at our Lenten sacrifices and attempts at repentance. But if we keep looking to the transfigured Christ and listening to Him, we will be strengthened and Easter made more richly meaningful. For our reflection, the transfiguration was a momentary vision of the glorified Christ. But in order to see it, it meant climbing the mountain. Climbing a mountain is difficult and exhausting, testing our strength. What is the mountain that is testing you this Lent? The climb is difficult, but there is glory at the top if we endure and push through. What is this glory you seek? Dear friends, I would like to leave you with these thoughts. Though we might wish that life had no struggles, it would seem that the Lord intends the climb for us, for the cross alone leads to true glory. What is the Lord doing here? He is showing us what the end shall be. There is a cross to get through, but there is glory on the other side. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.